increasing DOD opportunities with uh, HDA. We're going to tell you what that means. In fact, Pono Chang, who joins us today, who works with uh, HDA, is going to tell you what it means. Welcome to the show, Pono. Thank you for having me, Jake. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining us here on the military in Hawaii. So this is um, it's a it's a military thing. Um, is it associated with uh, the Chamber of Commerce? So yes, it's uh, associated with the Military Affairs Council. Um, that's where the Defense Alliance is housed, and uh, we do things. Uh, <clears throat> right, the MAC focuses a lot on. Um, advocacy and policy, whereas the alliance is a lot more framed towards helping build the uh, defense sector uh, in Hawaii, especially um, around small companies and everything from um, how to do business with the federal government to workforce development. I mean, workforce development is one of our large initiatives this year to get local residents uh, jobs in the defense sector. Well, it's very important because, um, you know, right now, our primary economy is hospitality, and hospitality is so fragile, so volatile, especially at a time when we have questions about the, the national and global economy. So we really have to have a backup plan, call it Plan B, or at least a, a, a version of Plan A. And um, so you're in a, in a place where your work will have, in my view, it will have a lot to do with the future of Hawaii going forward because A, uh, the military is here to stay, it's here to expand its influence in the Pacific. Um, and because B, you know, we have the resources, we just have to put the resources and the people, the workforce together with the military. And then we have a, a, a very important um, second sector of the economy, a diversification, if you will. So why are you doing this though? And what exactly are you doing with HDA? You know, when uh, <clears throat> the co-chairs came to me and talked about this project, it got me excited um, for the main reason in how do we help local residents get good paying jobs and be able to stay in Hawaii? I mean, right, we all know it's an expensive place to live and these are um, good paying jobs uh, that uh, can help uh, people make a good living here. And, and and oftentimes for some of the areas, and we can get into this when we start talking about workforce development, <clears throat> when either the military or its contractors have difficulty uh, finding the skill sets, they have to bring somebody into Hawaii. And right, they come from the mainland, they stay here, right? They don't have roots here. So it, it doesn't work out for both because... Um, it's like a revolving door, right? The employer yeah, brings they wind them in. Up pays leaving. For them. They wind up being right. disappointed in some way, and then they split, and then everybody has lost time and money over it. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, what we're trying to do again is helping the companies who are here and then helping their employees and then those who we can recruit into the sector get those skill sets and get those um, good paying jobs. So, you're a matchmaker then. They made a movie about that once. In fact, it was a Broadway play, The Matchmaker. Uh, <laughs> what kind of matches do you make, Bruno? Um, we, we do a mixture of them. So part of um, the Defense Alliance is kind of broken up into four areas, uh, one of which is small business support. And, and we really have um, two components of that. One is helping companies doing business who may not be in the defense sector and are interested in getting involved. So we try and provide some onboarding resources because it is, um, uh, it can be a complicated procurement system and you have to get all these certifications. The other part that we've been spending time with is uh, if you are in the defense sector, you have to get a certain level of cybersecurity certification. Whether you are an engineering firm, <coughs> or your landscaper, you have, there are certain requirements that you need to meet if you fall under certain categories, no matter what type of business you are, uh, of um, what they call CMMC, uh, which is cyber certification. And so that's the other part where we're helping with. And we're doing that with Cyber Hawaii. Um, <clears throat> they're doing a great job helping companies 
get set up, get their assessment done and kind of figure out what things that they're going to need. So that's part of that. And, and going to your uh, matchmaking question is helping small businesses um, match up with larger, what we call prime contractors. And for smaller companies, it's a way to get into the defense sector business it is by partnering with a, a prime contractor and you're a sub. And then that's how you kind of, a lot of the smaller companies get their feet wet, get access into the market, and then they become primes themselves one day. A lot of small <clears throat> companies are intimidated with defense contract work. Um, they're, they're afraid um, that they're going to have to read a, a thousand pages of manual and follow a thousand yeah. rules. Um, and they're going to get in trouble if they don't. Um, and, the, and that they, they have, um, what do you want to call it? The, um, they don't have a bargaining position because they're small and the guy at the other end of the table is big. Uh, so how do you help them get over that sense of intimidation? So a lot of times, sometimes we'll have um, programs and events where we'll talk about, um, uh, we'll have the prime scope. So one of our first in-person events uh, was held at the Sandbox. And um, we brought in some large contractors and they kind of talked about some of the projects that they that they have and that they see coming up through the federal government. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we had breakout sessions, almost like speed dating. And it was an opportunity for them to meet these subcontractors and vice versa. Um, the federal procurement system uh, has uh, uh, metrics and targets to meet in in procuring with small business. So oftentimes the small businesses help the larger companies uh, get some contracts because they have to meet certain um, targets, so to speak. So <clears throat> again, that matchmaking is getting them together, uh, finding the right companies and um, giving them the space to get to know each other and then how they can kind of work together. Do you actually find matches? In other words, uh, company A comes to you and says, we need a company B, and and you scan the horizon and find a company B for them? We don't do specific direct research. What we do is we create the, 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 either the program or the event for that matchmaking to happen, and then um, the companies amongst themselves will follow up. Mm -hmm. Especially, right, you go through the speed dating, you share your contact information, you share um, uh, what they kind of call um, your capability sheet, like what you're capable of, what your expertise is in. <clears throat> um, the military, the DOD, when they contract, they have what's called industry days, and we've done some of those as well. And it's the same thing. You go in, you kind of, um, the company will say, here's my capability, here's what I can do. And then you kind of um, build that relationship and, you know, have that opportunity then to bid. So if I'm uh, company A, looking at this video, um, how do I get involved in the system? Is it through a website, email? Uh, uh, yeah, so what? you can sign up for defensealliance.org, and then you'll get all of our emails. We send out emails at least once to tw two times a month. We talk about our programming events. You can go to our website and see some of the programs that we have. Um, one one of the, the um, other things, um, that we have that has been a little bit of our mantra is so in the last 18 months we've done a little over 20 events of our own and they've ranged from anything from matchmaking to workforce development say in the ship repair or intelligence field or it <clears throat> the other thing we've done is partner with other existing organizations and again our so what our mantra has been is not to duplicate what other people do. Because sometimes in Hawaii, even though we're so small, oftentimes we find that there's a lot of duplication. And some of it is necessary, right? Um, if you have a small business forum in February and somebody else has one in October, that's great because businesses can't make it just at that one time of year, right? You have to meet a multiple audience. <clears throat> but in partnering with our um, uh affiliate uh, stakeholders, you know, we've promoted and partnered with 50 other, 54 other events. So in that way, we've been able to kind of try and be the one-stop hub of all the programs, whether it's VBOC, MBDA, SBA, 
uh, SAME and all these organizations who do some sort of event or programming around contracting with the military? Well, uh, yeah, you know, you headed off a question I was going to ask you because, you know, uh, here in the course of our, our show, the military in Hawaii, you know, and our rubbing shoulders with uh, so many organizations that are dedicated to try to bring, you know, small contractors together with prime contractors and so forth and make an industry and make a robust, um, you know, and resilient industry here in Hawaii. Um, there's a lot of them and uh, you're another one. And so I think I already have at least partly of an, part, part, part of an answer, but what's your special sauce? Um, why should we have multiple organizations doing what you do or, or are things very close to what you do? Um, and why are you different? I think what we do is we try and coordinate. Um, and I don't mean in a leading way, but just in of a sharing of a information way amongst the various organizations. <clears throat> and each organization has a little bit of their niche. I mean, you look at SBA and they do a lot of great work. We've worked with them and had events uh, with them and they do right the broad business community then you have mbda that does minority focused uh programs and events or you have vboc which is veteran focus or ptac that helps you with procurement um everybody has a special niche and our one of our goals is to bring them all together <clears throat> excuse me share that information and push it out we have about a little over a thousand companies involved in the alliance that's a thousand uh, local, local companies. Great. Um, here, so I mean, local. I mean, they have a local. Either they're locally owned, or they are a mainland company, but they have a local office. Right. And um, have been able to kind of partner with everybody to share everybody's information. And if you are in the defense sector, you have one space to go that you can find all these programs and events. And then where we focus on is where we see a need. And we try and fill it. So one of the things regarding workforce is Ship Repair Association in working with them. And that is the private ship repair companies, not Pearl Harbor Shipyard, but the, pri I mean, that's DOD, but the private ship companies and working with them. And we set up um, a marine welding cohort in in partnership with uh, the Honolulu, Com Honolulu Community College and was able to get some workforce funding from the university for that. And we have a cohort that we just started and it's taking 12 individuals who didn't have marine welding skills and now they're gonna get them. And then <clears throat> the expectation is they're gonna get hired and have good paying jobs. And so we find those niches of either, it's it's something that me is in need and they just need somebody to bring the pieces together or Another example is uh, intelligence. Um, there's no real organization uh, that focuses on the intelligence field <clears throat> outside of, say, um, the federal government. And what we've done is um, had discussions on, again, workforce, develop, how do we establish the pipeline? Again, another field where, um, right, we have uh, NSA here, we have a new uh, innovation center that's going to be opening up uh, or starting to be uh, constructed that's going to provide hundreds of jobs in IT, cybersecurity, and intelligence. I mean, IT, cyber, There's there are organizations working on that. We partner with them, but intelligence is a perfect field where it's kind of missing, and we've kind of done uh, some programming and events around that, bringing together <clears throat> Uh, the university, other higher education, and um, the defense sector. There is going to be, well, it's not us building it, but trying to get the stakeholders together to create that educational pipeline mm. for people who are interested. Because in intelligence, it's a little bit of a different field. It's a it's a mixture of um, humanities, right? Language, history, and then also on the intelligence side. So it's a, it's a culmination of fields that isn't um, normally uh, placed together, like say an accounting degree, you're right? You wanna, you wanna get a marketing degree, right? It's prepackaged. So I've been 
working on that and had some events around uh, the intelligence field. So, uh, you know, at first we were talking about company A and looking for a partner in company B or a prime in company B. Now we're talking about individuals. Um, so uh, maybe my, my question before was if I'm company A and I want to get connected with company B, I go to your website. Suppose I'm individual A and I want to learn about uh, welding for shipbuilding. Uh, I want to become competent in that area so I can get a job with company A. Um, so is your website also a resource for me? Right now, it's mainly around companies and not necessarily individuals. But as we um, enter the next phase of our workforce development, we will. our hope is to partner with our educational partners, whether it's um, University of Hawaii, whether it be Manoa, West, uh, West Oahu, or community colleges, or HPU, Chaminade. <clears throat> They're all part of this uh, alliance and maybe put the links that lead them to these programs. I think that's that's something that we're doing in our next phase. Um, because right the, the, as an example, the welding program is kind of a pilot to see, right, did it make sense? Did it meet kind of the objectives? And then how do we move that further down the line? How about, you know, just, uh, I guess it's part of cyber in general, but computer programming, which is relevant to everything we do now. I mean, it, we live in a world of, computer programming and suppose uh, I want I want to get trained up in computer programming possibly including cyber um, how do I how do I where do I go what do I do how do I get involved because that's always a, a pretty sexy career you know it is and there's a huge demand obviously not just in the defense sector but in the private sector as well um, again right now we're focused more on helping companies <clears throat> recruit that. And one of the things uh, that we do have is uh, the um, Climb High uh, resume bank, where people can go in and uh, we can get you that information where both companies can post uh, job postings. We have about maybe 100, 110 job postings in the defense sector. And then individuals can go in and post a resume and then kind of meet. It's kind of like our own uh, LinkedIn, so to speak, for uh, Hawaii and for the defense sector. Oh, that's very helpful, I think, right there. So mm -hmm. um, after you make a, a match, so to speak, a partnership, uh, some kind of you know, contractual relationship with company A and, and company B, a prime, um, do you follow through? I mean, what's the concept on uh, staying with it to follow up and make sure everything's working okay? Is, is that part of your mission also? Yeah, I mean, we do follow up with companies. Um, we do try and get feedback of what we can do better to improve the, the process. What are they looking for? Because in the end, I mean, right, uh, uh, time is probably everyone's va most valuable commodity. And how do we make the best use of their time to get them and what their organizations need to succeed? Mm -hmm. And so um, we're always trying to get feedback and then trying to figure out where do we go in the next step? What are we going to focus on next? Um, and, and that's kind of what we're, we've been working on in the last, say, month or so. Sure. It's the marketplace. You've got to know what the <clears throat> military uh, contracting marketplace is like, because it mm -hmm. may change. <clears throat> I'll say it will change. It is changing. It's all about change. So uh, before the show began, you and I were talking about um, Zoom and virtual connections, and uh, you actually got organized right in the middle of, the, of, of COVID which made Zoom an important um, you know, asset for you in terms of communicating, organizing, putting people together, doing your own work, you know, for that matter. And I wonder if you could comment on that, where you, know, where, where you are in terms of using virtual connections um, and where you see it going in terms of uh, the virtual connections between the players um, you know, that you communicate with. Both for the Alliance and as a small business person, I mean, there's no turning back. <clears throat> I think virtual is here to stay. Uh, I think even for the Alliance, I mean, right, we, we, we have been doing in-person events. We're going to be doing more of them. Um, but there are some things that 
virtual makes more sense. Uh, it's easier for uh, people to access, whether it be from the office or the home, they don't have to drive anywhere, get parking. Um, they can be more productive, right? You can go from one meeting right into our webinar mm -hmm. and not have to put that um, transportation time in. And <clears throat> so I don't see us going back to the way it was pre-COVID. I mean, it's it's a, a, a mix of here to stand, especially for the line. So a perfect example is we did uh, an event with SAME talking about the, the business opportunities for Hawaii companies outside of Hawaii, right? Especially in the Pacific region, <clears throat> whether it be Guam or in Australia or other places that uh, uh, the military from the Pacific Rim uh, um, uh, pr pr spends its money. And so, uh, right, we had uh, somebody from the Alaska region, we had a few people here, and I think we had one other person from another region. And <clears throat> if we had to hold that event, right, you'd have to fly them in, pay for their lodging. And yet it was it was a great event. We had a lot of small companies who were able to see, oh, if I'm doing business in Hawaii, there's also opportunity for me within the Pacific region as well. And some, <clears throat> we've also had some companies speak to that because a, a lot of Hawaii companies have do business, whether it be in Guam, Japan, Saipan, Australia, um, you know, all over in the Pacific region, there's opportunity for them. Sure. And uh, and to go to uh, something which isn't necessarily in your main, mainstream, if I'm that guy who wants to learn computer programming, um, you know, or, or for that matter, uh, shipbuilding uh, as an individual, you know, with with training and experience and all that, um, and I want to, and I, and I've gone to school at the program at, um, you know, the community college. Um, mm -hmm. I can interview using virtual technology, and um, you know, I can tell you that um, that works at least for us. It works well. Um, it, it's not the same thing as, uh, you know, as being actually in the same room, but it's close. And you get you get enough information where you can make a decision, um, so that you know that that works out okay. And I suppose um, if you have somebody who is trying to get you know trained up and trying to get a job in some DoD company, um, either here in Hawaii or on the mainland, which you know which has an office in Hawaii, whatever, um, it's 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 got to be a great way to save time and money and travel and all that, uh, to use virtual. That Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I'm making a little bit of a guess here, but I think it's also helped us get people to speak at our events in some cases where if they had to, right, get in a car, drive, come, park, go, and then spend the time and then go back, they may not have been able to attend. So I think that is also helpful. That being said, um, right, there is still a place for in-person. There are certain things that are better in-person, uh, like we talked about our matchmaking programs and some of those. Uh, we've had both and <clears throat> matchmaking virtually works a little, but obviously in-person I think is a, a lot more effective. Sure, it's interesting. You're kind of a you're a child of COVID. Can I call you that? You're a, you're a child of COVID. You're a child of virtual. You, you know, you um, you enter the marketplace, so to speak, the marketplace of putting people together, matchmaking uh, DOD companies. Um, from that point of view, and uh, I imagine over time you'll really get to be good at it, doing the hybrid. You know, making sure that you use the right methodology for the right circumstance. So this is a, a great opportunity, I think. It's a great opportunity for you, for sure. It's a great opportunity for the chamber. And it's a great opportunity for Hawaii to have this company bringing people together on a, a kind of comprehensive basis. So tell me, what do you see for the future of it? Uh, I think we can assume that there will be more military presence and contracting here in Hawaii. So that's an assumption we can make. But what about the, what assumptions can we make about the ability to train and hold uh, a workforce here? 
That's always been a problem as long as I can remember. Um, and it is a problem today, for sure. Uh, just a footnote, I remember a, 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 a DOD recruiter came out here um, from Virginia, contacted me and said, we want to find somebody who can do computer programming at Pearl Harbor. I said, you had to travel from Virginia to come out here and talk to me about that? What's the problem? He says, well, there are not enough people in Hawaii who qualify to do that work. So we're making a special effort to come out here and talk to people like you. And I was struck by it. So I guess, um, you know, what is, I'm asking, what is the future of the workforce initiative here? And what is the future of the, the those uh, those companies, the thousand companies you mentioned uh, that have a presence in Hawaii um, who could get into this industry that we, you and us and everybody um, are trying to build uh, to bond up to DOD activities. What do you, what do you see the, the timeline? What do you see the result? What do you see the level of success? I think, you know, this all started about building the sector and creating jobs for local people, right? Um, DBED, who, um, who brought us in to do this, that was their main focus. And in working with them uh, moving forward, what we're looking at is actually... I'm very hopeful and, and we have a lot of good things going on. So you talked about the IT and cyber uh, space. Um, one of the things that we did uh, that was part of our um, uh, goals is to kind of do an assessment, um, not just of the defense sector, but overall. And that was done with the university, the chamber of commerce and the IT industry, the defense sector, both public and private was part of that. And then saying, okay, here are the needs of employers. Here's what we're, uh, if you provide this type of training and these skill sets, we will be interested in hiring these people. And so now we have that framework of the needs. Uh, the university and others are working to provide that, whether it's in credit or non-credit programs. Because for some of the things that we find in the IT space, uh, you may have a degree in art design, but when you go to say coding school or you get a certificate in software programming, um, a lot of people have come into the IT space who that was not what their undergraduate degree was in. So there's a lot of opportunity there, both for people to come up the traditional way through the two, four year degree in IT or cross uh, from that industry. Um, so we're very hopeful in that space. Um, the other is again in ship repair. Like we said, we did the pilot uh, welding cohort. We hope to do more of those moving forward. <clears throat> and we think it'll help not just the contractors, but also uh, Pearl Harbor as well, whether or not there's opportunity to do advanced manufacturing at the shipyard. Um, right, 3D printing of parts rather than shipping them in. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and then the other is in engineering, right? Uh, how do we uh, do that? And, and uh, the university has, has and has, excuse me, had a solid pipeline from the College of Engineering into companies for many years now. And so we're just trying to expand on that in the defense sector. Um, we, one of the programs that we created, uh, excuse me, events that we hope to have annually is the internship program. And that is a big way for um, st students um, to uh, get access to uh, an employer and vice versa for the employer to see uh, what talent is out there and bring them in, especially in the defense sector, it's important because it allows them time to go through the clearance process. Um, <clears throat> and so at our event, again, at the Sandbox, I mean, we had companies, uh, it was host, uh, sponsored by Booz Allen uh, Hamilton. Uh, we had NSA there. Uh, we had, and then we had other uh, uh, non-defense sector. We had ASB, we had Servco. Um, we had Meyer, which is a, another defense contractor. And it, it was very cool to see. And, and, and in answer to your question, I, I, I think back to the event is I'm very hopeful because you saw the young talent. We, we brought them there and they talked about what their internship program was, what 
a capstone or problem they were asked to solve, what they worked on. And you saw the future at hand with the opportunity to go into this field. And it was <clears throat> exciting. Uh, it was one of our larger in-person events. We had almost 100 people there, <clears throat> mostly students. And it was um, uh, a, a great meeting of uh, the employers, the interns, and and, and the military, uh, General Flynn, four star, uh, was there who kind of was our keynote speaker talking about the importance, talking to the students of the importance of what they are doing and what it means to the readiness of our forces, um, right? You, how being involved in IT and this internship relates to he, his ability to be, um, ready in the field and what it means to him and his troops. It's, yeah. I'm yeah, very important that you have some contact between active duty, military, seniors are good um, with the crowd that you're talking to so they can, um, you know, um, examine what it's like in, to be in contract with the military. But that leads me to one last thing I was going to ask you about. So suppose I'm uh, an engineer, a graduate engineer, at um, UH, and I get a job at the shipyard where I, I'm an employee of the shipyard. And I look around and I see, hmm, you know, this is pretty interesting, this work. Um, I, I like being a, a DOD employee, but, you know, how about I should be um, uh, an entrepreneur? I should start my own defense company. Um, I, I see how it works. I understand it. I've been at the shipyard for a few years. I, I know enough to start a company, form a corporation, whatever it is. Uh, and I know enough about the, you know, the technology and the skills where I can, I can effectively hire people for my entrepreneurial brand new company. Um, and I, to me, a person like that sounds like the, the you know, the perfect combination of backgrounds and skills because I have my engineering degree. I know about UH. I know about a, a source of additional workforce from UH. Um, I know about a little about Hawaii business and I know how the, the Navy works at the shipyard. So I should be a perfect candidate to be an entrepreneur of a brand new defense, you know, one of those thousand companies, a defense company that will be one of your clientele, so to speak. Is this happening? Should it happen? Do you like the idea? Um, does it work? Um, or is it, or the, is the hill too steep to climb? No, um, I would say uh, go to our website, hawaiidefensealliance.org. And we one of the things that the Small Business Support Working Group wanted to create was, um, like I said, the businesses who might be thinking and want to get in or those who are in the, the last group is the ones who might who have some maybe something very small or they're interested we have a, mod, a module excuse me on our website that if you answer a, a survey of questions it will populate some resources that are available to help you to get to that next step so maybe you have your business dcca business registration and you know, you got your tax license, but you don't have a checking account or you don't have a financial plan or you don't have a business plan. When you go through our um, module, I like to call it, and you answer all the questions, it will populate um, a, a group of um, organizations that can help you with that next step. And again, this goes with partnering and with our uh, 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 partner uh, alliance organization. So if you need a business plan written, like what will pop up is you can go to SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, and they can help you with that. Or if you need to learn about procurement, you can go to PTAP. Or you're a veteran and you need certain things, you can go to VBUC. So <clears throat> the system has certain things built into it, algorithms. And then when you go in, it'll tell you who you can get help from. And, and many of these are done by governmental agencies. So oftentimes they're free or vet very, very low cost. And that will help you there. And, and that's... Again, the partnership working, not not doing any of those things, not duplicating, but helping people be the one-stop shop to get to the right place. Because there are all these organizations that I mentioned do great work, 
And oftentimes, sometimes companies just don't know how to find them. And so that's what we um, built into our site. And hopefully uh, that will provide a lot of value to small companies or entrepreneurs thinking about starting a company in this field. Okay, we're about out of time, Pono. It's been great to talk to you. And I, I want to offer you uh, this opportunity to leave a message with anybody who uh, will view this, uh, you know, this program um, uh, on any side of the coin, whether it's a small company, whether it's a prime, um, whether it's an individual looking to be part of the workforce, so, or the public trying to appreciate what you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So can you leave a message? Tell us what you would like us to think about going forward. Uh, <clears throat> taking a look at our website and seeing what things we can offer to you and your company. I think we have a lot of resources there that, again, not that just we can provide to uh, uh, your company, but your organization and your employees. Uh, and hopefully we can help you be successful. And, you know, if you have questions, you can contact us on our website and we would love to hear from you as uh, again, working with our stakeholders and our, um, our sponsor DBED, you know, we hope we are making Hawaii a better place uh, for the people who live here. Yeah. Let, let's build the economy. Bono Chan. Hawaii Defense Alliance, HDA. Thank you so much for coming around. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. And thank you for uh, uh, doing this. And and I, and congratulations, 21 years. Wow, went by fast. Yeah. Almost 22, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bono. <laughs> thank you, Take Jay. Care. Aloha. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.